in your opinion, why might churches be hesitant to begin or be in ministry with young mm-hmm. adults? I think for me, what I've experienced and what I've heard from others a lot of times, it's not so much that churches are hesitant in their own minds, meaning they want to resist young adults. I think it's more of a hesitancy in terms of they're not sure what to do Mm -hmm. or how to maybe reach them anymore because unfortunately in a lot of our churches now, we have fewer and fewer young adults. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk with folks or when I've experienced it in ministry myself, it's not that churches say, oh, we don't want young adults. In fact, they very much do. But it's more like they want young adults to come in and do everything the way they've done it for so many years. Uh, The way they think, the way they would program, the way they would do everything. And so that's what they're really looking for. Mm -hmm. And since young adults today may think something different than what their predecessors had done, that makes that connection more difficult because uh, suddenly churches aren't quite sure anymore how to reach those young adults because what had worked for them and for a number of generations no longer seems to work. But I think at the end of the day, they would still very much say, well, we want young adults. We crave young adults. I think it's just more they're not sure how to do it and mm. go about connecting with them. Mm. Well, that's an excellent point. And I think it's it's hard to take those first steps. Right. And so kind of in your experience and what you're feeling, how do you overcome that hesitancy or mm. that? What, what are those first steps that churches might need to be taking? Yeah, um, yeah, it's hard for me to say about steps or specific programs because I actually think the bigger issue for any church or any ministry setting is really the heart Mm. or the attitude that the church or ministry setting has. Because you can set things into place. You can set your program and you can set events on the calendar, but I don't really think at the end of the day that's what's going to connect with young adults. I think what young adults will connect with is feeling genuinely cared for Mm. or reached out to or loved or valued. And so I think if we're going to talk about a church setting doing a better job of reaching young adults, I think the first thing that has to happen is a heart shift, meaning it's no longer about how do we get these young adults in here. Mm -hmm. It's much more about how do we go out and love them, connect with them, share in ministry with them, welcome them, so that in that process there's an opportunity for a relationship to begin to form. Once that relationship begins to form, then I think you can collaborate with them and together sort of come up with what might work uh, to help more and more young adults be part of a church or ministry setting. So I think that happens in a variety of ways. If I were to say to a church, what's the first thing you should do? I think the first thing I would say is start praying Mm. and pray heavily. So I think if you begin there with prayer, uh, begin to talk about it at meetings and begin to talk about it with each other and begin to preach on it at different times, I think when you start to put all of those things together, I think the culture begins to change where it's not just... Uh, that's another thing to target, another event to, to mm, accomplish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's an attitude shift that hopefully once that attitude shift happens, then I think you can talk more about logistics and specifics. But I think they fall into place. I think the much harder thing is getting your heart in the right place to even begin to love them. And, and to get your heart in the right place, to, to start that process, prayer, obviously, excellent. You know that, that is where we should start. What are some questions maybe that might help church leaders mm. get into that hard place? Do you, you know, what should they be asking themselves or, or each other? Yeah, I, I, probably, I guess two questions that would come to mind for me are the, are the why mm-hmm. and the who. Okay. I think those are more important than the how. So if a church is going to talk about this, the first question I think they need to ask themselves, why are we doing this? Mm. Is it because there's a few more seats empty and we got to fill them? Is it because we feel like we're missing out? Is it because uh, we're getting pressure from someone else that we don't have enough young adults? Is it just self-preservation? Like, oh, if we don't get more in, we're not going to be here tomorrow. If that's our why, I think young adults will sense that because again, it comes from a very inauthentic place. But I think if the why can be literally through the eyes of Christ. If, if the why can be, we want these kids here because they're my kids or my grandkids mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or my kids' friends, that's way different. Because now you're wanting to reach them out of sense of love and care. Uh, you're re- wanting to reach them out of a sense of the, the reasons that Jesus pursued and loved us. It's not about just getting the next ones in so we can continue as a church and as an organization. I really think the first question has to be, why are we doing that? And checking our motives. And if mm. if our motives are really anything but motives of love, 
then it doesn't matter what we do after that. So I think that's where you begin with a why. I think the second question then becomes, so who's going to be a part of this? Mm -hmm. um, and, and who's going to help make this happen? And it's interesting because you know, so often we look in books and, and we, we talk to folks, and what's the general category of the right people to have in? And I don't think there is a general category. I think there are some who are incredibly extroverted who are awesome. It's just going out, connecting with youth or young adults. I think there are some that are introverts, mm -hmm. and they're just as good, just in a very different way. And I think the thing that makes it different is what's their intention. Like if you have the right people with the right intentions, it doesn't matter what their personality is. It doesn't really matter what attitude it is. It's people with the right intention. Uh, I remember I was part of a ministry where uh, a gentleman started leading an after-school program for us, and the kids were pretty rough. He had no formal education. Uh, he was in his upper 40s. He was extremely introverted. On paper, he would have done a lousy job. But I'm telling you, he loved these kids just mm -hmm. to love them. And he would walk the streets, and he learned their names, and he would literally bring them in, and he would hear their stories, and he would connect with them. And the kids responded so well to him. And he built an entire after-school program just because his heart's intention was to love the kids. So I think those are the places to begin. And then you, get, you, have, you spiral that out. And in your conversations in church leadership, it's just always on the radar of how are we doing this? How, and it's not just one or two people's job. Like It's mm. not the hired staff person or after-school program director's job. H how is it part of the DNA for all of us that we're always on the lookout, again, not in a targeted kind of way, but it's just who we are mm. because we hunger for them and we don't want them to not be there. We don't want them to miss out on the love of Christ, just like we don't want to miss out on that love ourselves.